Hi guys, Chris here from USP Motorsports. As you can see, some of you guys might recognize this is Charles hey. from Humble Mechanic. What's up everybody? We are here with his 04 R32 that he flew down uh, from, from uh, North Carolina down to Miami to pick it up. And we're gonna be doing a, a little bit of a different install video today. Uh, it's gonna be a little more raw and unedited version. Uh, we are gonna be installing a R32 test pipe on his Mark IV R32. Uh, so go ahead and follow us with it. Um, this is a little, no, uh, little different install than I'm used to doing because it's a little older car, so it's got some rusted parts on it. So hopefully you don't hear any bad words of me <laughs> screaming or yelling that I got to use a torch. But if you do, at least you'll know how to do the install if you have an o, uh, 04 R32. I think some of those cuss words actually come along as part of an install on, on a, a, a Mark IV of any any kind and this is a Florida car too especially yeah and so uh, imagine if this was a North car we'd be in big trouble I wouldn't have bought it so <laughs> no we wouldn't um, but yeah I'm excited to uh, to get this pipe on so Chris let's do it yeah all right so as far as DIYs and installs this is actually pretty straightforward and only a handful of bolts we have the clamp here at the back we have six 13 millimeter nuts here at the front and we're also going to need to take off this little cover right here to get access to the oxygen sensor connectors because we're going to pull all that out together. And if you're lucky and your R32 is still stock, it probably should have this little bracket right here. I usually like to take this off as well. It makes pulling the loom out easier or you really don't even have to pull the wire out. You can just take the bracket down and leave it in there and then put it back up. We're going to go ahead and take this housing off. It's just one 10 millimeter nut. And that's plastic, so you don't really need to go to town on it. One little hitting guy, actually, too. Oh, sorry. Two 10 millimeter nuts. <laughs> Pull the wires out of the holders here. Just enough to where you can get the connectors out. Sometimes they're easier than others. And luckily, they're color coded, so you can't really mess them up. But if you feel like you need to, go ahead and mark them. There we go. They also do come out if that's easier for you. Sometimes some like to stay and some like to come out. The back, the rear O2 sensors are going to be the four pin connectors. That's, that's really showing its age there, Charles. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Starting to show its age. So here's our two rear oxygen sensor connectors. We can actually leave these just where they are, they're at. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, just an FYI, in the beginning of the video, I cheated a little bit. We did use some PB nut blaster. Um, mm -hmm. As you can see, we got some rusted bolts. So I would definitely recommend uh, probably leaving this soaked for about a half an hour yep. or so, um, you know, and then start the job. So I did cheat a little bit uh, just, to, just to get these things prepped up. So Charles is gonna go ahead and take these uh, 13s off in the front. Yeah, now the kit, is gonna come with new hardware. So if one of them breaks or you need to cut it off, that's not that big of a deal. But like Chris was saying, hitting them with some uh, penetrating oil is definitely something I, I would recommend. It's usually step one uh, of, of doing any kind of job like this. Also, tip, these bent wrenches work really well for reaching the top bolt. So you'll just take these six nuts off and then we'll move to the back. One other thing, this can be really hot. So if you just drove your car or something like that, make sure you're using protection to not burn yourself. These catalytic converters get ultra hot and I would hate to see someone burn themselves. All right, next I'm gonna take the two 13 millimeter bolts out of this little, for this little bracket right here. Really glad those were bolts. And that's just gonna make taking the wiring down a little bit easier. And one thing I like to do, if at all possible, is just put the bolts back where they came from. That way you don't have to worry about setting them down somewhere and losing them. Next, what we want to do is loosen the oxygen sensors. You don't want to take them all the way out because that can twist the wiring all up. Um, I usually like to loosen them with it in the car and then take them out with it on the ground. That also makes it easier to not <laughs> switch around the two oxygen sensors, which in this case, it's very clear, but there are other applications where it's easy to do. If you have the cool oxygen sensor tool, 
use that. If you don't have this tool, you can use a 7 8 or a 22 millimeter and just take, take it up there and loosen the oxygen sensors. And just get those a little bit loose. Again, you want to pay attention to not twisting up the wiring of the oxygen sensor. And we'll come around to the other side. Now keep in mind for you guys up north, uh, some of these O2 sensors could be a real pain in the butt to get out. Um, if they are, um, we could all, we, you could recommend heat on them, but at the same time I don't recommend it because you could damage uh, the O2 sensor pretty badly uh, and sometimes actually might have to replace them. Um, so if you, if you can't get these out, you know, try it on the ground like Charles was saying with a 7 8 wrench. Uh, you can put a little heat on the bottom, uh, but I have seen applications where we had to replace them uh, because they just won't come out. So, so keep that in mind, especially for the, the uh, snow roads you guys have up there. Yep. So we pretty much started at the front and worked backwards. Final step is to take off this rear clamp, and that's going to be a 17 millimeter depending on your rust level, or actually if it's ever been replaced, a lot of the factory replacement ones were 16 millimeter. So it could be either one of those. Oftentimes you can slide this clamp just by kind of moving it back and forth. But if you need to, you can grab a mallet or something and give it a tap backwards. Maybe. It's coming off pretty good. Now what I did was I just pulled the whole exhaust back a little bit and that gave Chris enough room to remove the front section. As you can see, this is the, uh, the factory cat section. Um, it also has a little bit of a uh, benefit to it as well as weight. I want to say it's probably about a, a 10 pound savings. Yeah, I don't know how many curls I could do on it, but I could do curls with this and then do curls with our aftermarket one. But definitely has a little bit of weight saving uh, for you guys that are uh, hungry about weight, um, I'm a pretty big weight guy. For, uh, for size kind of comparison, that's what we're looking at in the difference. So just so you guys know, this is a, uh, a two inch pipe that, that V's into a nice transition here that goes to a two and a half inch stainless steel pipe. And of course has our 200 cell high flow cats in it as well. So I'll let Charles continue uh, cool. the next step. I like to have both cats on the ground right next to each other. And the reason I like to do this is I have seen multiple people get oxygen sensors swapped around. Not so much in this application, but a lot of front O2 and rear O2 getting them swapped around. So this way makes it almost idiot resistant as far as getting them in the right spot. We already broke them loose. So all we need to do is just twist them out. I always like to look at the threads and make sure they're not boogered up so we don't risk messing up our new bung for our cat and then go ahead and just run it all the way in by hand and we'll do our other one so if you're going to put anti-seize on it not a terrible idea just be careful and don't get it on the sensor. the sensor portion of it you don't need much that's probably more than i even need so in case it's too too making too much Wookie noise, that keeps the Wookie the Wookie sounds inside a little bit better. Okay. We'll go ahead and pull this other one off. Get a little on there as well. As I said, don't get it on the sensor. It's one of those things you really don't need much. Really, just a tiny bit will do just fine. And then I like to snug these up as best I can on the ground. Usually that means kind of kneeling on it and tightening it. We'll give it one final check when we get the whole cat inside the car. Those are actually going in pretty nice. That's it, now we're gonna move this one out of the way and we're gonna install the new one. All right, so before we put our new cat in, I like to just clean this surface up of the downpipe a little bit. You're not making microchips or anything like that, just take some Scotch-Brite and clean it. That'll give a better 
ceiling surface. I wouldn't even take a power tool to it or anything like that, just enough to knock any big chunks off. So before we put the new parts on there, we need to make sure we're gonna put the gaskets. There's a number of ways you can do this. You can set it in the back clamp first and then put the front on, or if you want, you can run a bolt in and hang the gaskets on it like that. That's another pretty easy way. Just make sure you get the gaskets and everything on there. All right, now that's just kind of supported there. We'll go ahead and throw some more bolts in. All right, now that we got them all started by hand, let's go ahead and just snug them up. All right, and we'll go back with a ratchet and just tighten them up, make sure they're all good and tight because as you tighten one, if you didn't have it all the way tight, it'll actually loosen a little bit or it'll be sort of twisted a little bit. So we just wanna go back one more time and double check them all. All right, once you get all the front bolts tightened up, let's route our oxygen sensor harnesses back where they go. So we'll put our 13s back on this bracket. You guys all the way up here. Okay, we'll put all of our connectors back in this housing. Put our tens back in. Now we did a pretty good job snugging the oxygen sensors up when it was on the ground. Let's just double check them and make sure that they are tight. That one's tight. Once we have all of our oxygen sensor wires routed, Tighten our bracket back up. And final step is to tighten up the 217s on our back clamp. And that's it. All right, guys, we're back just to exit this R32 test bike uh, install video with Charles at Humble Mechanic. I'm gonna pass it over to him so he can uh, give his thoughts on the install, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fire this puppy up. I really wanna hear what it sounds like. Uh, as far as install goes, guys, this is about as straightforward as it gets. It's a handful of bolts out, handful of bolts in. Fitment was perfect. No massaging like you usually have to do with a lot of other aftermarket parts. So very impressed with the fitment, with the finish, and uh, really, most importantly, I just wanna hear how it sounds. Yeah, me too. Get that Wookie sound coming. Wookie. And I can't do Wookie. All right, moment of truth. Chris, fired up. So I would say that doesn't sound too much different, but uh, let's get some RPM on it. drums left that it actually isn't that much louder but it's so much throatier it sounds incredible I'm excited uh, I can't wait to drive it and, and see the the difference in horsepower so with that we're gonna wrap it up guys don't forget to subscribe to USB Motorsports thanks for hanging out also if you want to see more of my videos swing over to humblemechanic.com or on all the social medias YouTube Facebook Twitter Instagram and whatnot always at humble mechanic thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time